Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Share with us a sense of your studies to the point where you have discovered that there is informal education going on in the slums. Now, the African Population and Health Research Center uh, carries out uh, research not only in the area of population and health, but also in education. And uh, recently, we've completed a number of uh, analyses uh, that have very good, interesting uh, findings that uh, really shows us <coughs> what is happening within the uh, slum areas, within the populations that uh, we would describe as being vulnerable. One of the things that have come out is the existence of the informal and um, an informal education within those slums. What we mean by the informal is um, the schools are following the formal curriculum, but they are not always structured in terms of operations the way the formal uh, schools are structured. So what is interesting is that um, <coughs> uh, people from those areas, they like going to those schools, sometimes not by choice, but by circumstances. Sometimes they look at uh, what alternatives exist, and you realize that those informal schools provide them with the opportunities to access, ed to access education. I'll tell you why this is so. After the introduction of the free primary education, okay, um, the schools, the public schools, became overcrowded. So many children that transferred either from the private sector or private schools to the public schools, yes. while others who are not previously in school also went to yes. school. So because of those large class sizes and all that, space was constrained in public schools. Now, because of that, then parents took uh, different options depending with the uh, um, socioeconomic background. They took their children to small, private, privately owned, um, primary schools. Now, these primary schools do not have the kind of facilities that you would find in public schools. The reality is <coughs> those schools are filling in a very important gap. Otherwise, if they were not there, then we would have so many children who are not accessing yeah. uh, primary education, the basic education. More importantly is in terms of infrastructure. You would find that the classrooms sometimes are tiny, uh, they are behind, uh, for instance, you may find some schools who are simply behind the, 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 the residential uh, structures. Those schools exist there. Some of them are not registered by the Ministry of Education. In fact, our research has shown that within Fiwandani and Kologosho, we have up to 59% of the schools that are non-public schools not being registered by the Ministry of Education. Now, what that means is that sometimes they miss out in terms of technical support that they can get from the Ministry of Education, ETC, like inspection and being, and give, being given technical advice.